We have arrived at Uxbridge Station at an absolutely ungodly hour because today we are doing the craziest challenge that I have ever dreamt up. We are going to Dublin for a day trip. We will be flying from London Luton Airport with Ryanair and I'm not sure how it's going to go. So let's start the show. It's been 25 years since I have flown with Ryanair and I vowed I would never fly with them again. But if you want to go to Dublin for the day, that seems to be the cheapest way to go. Now, the whole booking process was overly complicated because we're only taking a small bag with us each. In fact, yesterday I was getting so paranoid about the dimensions of the bag that they allowed that I actually bought one from Amazon, which is specifically for them. Isn't that right, Paul? Yes, and you were frantically worried that it wasn't going to get here on time. But it did. And the thing is, the other thing about Ryanair is that they use the Boeing 737 MAX aircraft, which has been involved in two fatal crashes. So I want to see if I'm going to die today as well. And there is a chance, um, any time you fly, I'm not just saying it's Ryanair, but there is a chance that you could crash any time. Now, the other thing is with Ryanair, if you want to keep everything as cheap as possible, you just fly with a small bag to their dimensions, which is 40 by 25 by 20 centimetres. And you also don't do any extras at all. So you are then left to the mercy of the random seat generator, which could leave you in the dreaded middle seat. I was lucky. I have got seat 3D going out, which is an aisle seat right at the front. What about you, Paul? 23D or something? Or E? It must be E, because I think you said that you were in the dreaded middle seat. Well, we're about to leave Oxbridge, as I said, at this very ungodly hour. And we will be taking this Metropolitan Line train to King's Cross St Pancras. And from there, we will be getting a Thameslink train to Luton Airport Parkway. Now, once we get there, for the very first time, we will be using the Dart. And what well, is the Dart Hall? It's not the one in Dublin. No, it's the... Uh... It's the thing that links up Luton Airport Station to the Luton Airport. Yeah, so it's like a little rail link. Sorry. And um, it opened, I think, last year. Now, the last time that I flew from Luton Airport again, oh, we're on the move now, look, was 25 years ago. And up until last year, you had to take a bus from Luton Airport Parkway to the airport itself. Right, we are going to settle in for this ride and we will see you at St Pancras, but we've only got 15 minutes to get our ticket, so we might be on the train by that time. We made our train with about a minute to spare. We haven't left yet. And again, with everything in this country, nothing is easy, everything is complicated. So it's not a Thames Line train, it's EMR, so we are in a completely different part of St Pancras Station. So after using the loo and then getting the ticket and finding out that the real card that we just bought yesterday is not even valid on this service, we ended up paying almost £50 to get to Luton Airport. Now, we will talk about the prices of the flights at the end of this episode because that's even more interesting than the price of this ticket. But we are due to leave right now. Look at that. Perfect timing. <coughs> Next stop, Luton Airport Parkway. And actual fact it is because it says this is the Luton Airport Express, which actually is a service that doesn't even exist. It's just something that they've decided to call it.
just one thing to bear in mind when you're buying a ticket to Luton Airport. Make sure it is actually to Luton Airport and not just Luton Airport Parkway. You get it to Luton Airport, it also includes the Dart Rail connection from the Parkway station to the airport. Next stage is to get the DART, which is the direct air rail transit, DART. Now there is actually a DART in Dublin as well, but it is completely different, yes, and it's not the tram, that's the, the Lewis. Um, so we are now waiting for the next DART to arrive, and it's going to be here in about 180 seconds. It was more like 18 seconds, here it comes. Well that only took about five minutes and it was a rather pleasant ride. Now we have to take the escalator up to the airport and to be honest I think that's going to take longer than the dart. Oh, I do remember this. Oh, do you? Yes, yeah, so it's been 25 years since I've been here, but the building looks much the same. It's like a big box, basically. I'm sure it's been refurbished and maybe even extended in that time. <laughs> if you're flying with Ryanair, you've got to keep in mind that they will charge you for everything, but they'll charge you if you do not have a boarding pass in your possession. Now, you can either have one printed out or you can have an electronic version, such as on their app. We've got printouts and we've also got the app and in my case, I saved mine down onto my Google wallet. Did you do something like that, Paul? It is in my wallet on the iPhone. Ah, right. You see, I'm still analog. So, no, Android. <laughs> <laughs> but I am still analog as well. Okay, and we haven't even had our coffee yet. So I think we're going to get... Um, through security, we don't need to do any more bag drops or anything because we've just got our little carry-on bags and we'll see you on the other side.
and gentlemen, uh, very good morning. Welcome aboard this Ryanair flight, the FR331, taking you all to Dublin. If this is not your destination today, please make yourself known to a member of the cabin crew. Today we're traveling the Boeing 737-800 series aircraft. Ladies and gents, anyone who is joining us now, we very kindly ask you to keep moving down the cabin aisles. Please take your allocated seats. to be back in Dublin. Welcome to Dublin Airport and the flight only took 55 minutes but it was not the best journey for you was it Paul? Not for me no because there was two guys that were sitting on the opposite side of the aisle for me and they were blasting their music and then I just assumed okay yeah this is what Ryanair flights are like but then you didn't have that experience did you? Well I thought I was going to because the guy who was next to me now I did have a the middle seat free but he started when he brought his phone out um, there was that music coming out of it but I think in his case it was a mistake because he did turn it down and then put the uh, headphones on so it wasn't constant but they did have it on maybe 20 30 percent of the time i mean i thought an aircraft was like the last bastion of peace but obviously not on a ryanair flight nobody cares let's just talk about the flight itself um i thought it was generally okay um but one thing that really did annoy me um was having the um, safety card printed on all the seats in bright yellow and blue, whatever it was, in front of us. That really hurt my eyes. Now, I know why they have that there, because there are no seat back pockets. And also, and this is a good point actually, the seats don't recline. So you're not going to have someone's seat coming back in your face. But uh, the whole idea is it's to make um, everything cheaper. So they have like cheap seats, no seat back pockets and no, t no tilts. Do you know what I found interesting? I found it interesting that the pilot kept advertising. Okay, yeah, we are coming around for the duty-free type of things. Oh, we're coming around for the coffees and teas. I don't think many people from the back of the plane bought it because the guy brought the trolley up to go towards the middle and then it kind of met where the front of the trolley was. Oh, there were two trolleys? Yeah. Oh, right. I didn't that, know that. So. Well, I was at the front, you see, and I didn't see anybody buy anything. I don't think it was the pilot who said that. It was the purser. <laughs> the pilot was flying the plane, I think. Um, and they also sold lottery tickets. It's all very, very weird. Um, now, we do have one more Ryanair flight to go tonight. Oh, I should just say that um, I always worry when I get on an airline I haven't flown with either for a long time or before is, will the seatbelt fit me? And it did. There was a good maybe a couple of inches um, spare room and also the the table came down and there was lots of space as well so those were some plus points I did also think when we landed um, we seemed to I think we almost were going to overshoot to the runway because oh, I didn't see that. well I was looking out and I thought oh we're already still quite high up and there's the airport and when we got down it was a smooth enough landing but then the brakes went on pretty hard and I was actually going forward and having to hold on to the seat in front. And as soon as it almost got to like um, a stop, it then did a quite a severe turn to the right to get to the gate. So I think um, it may have been coming in a little bit too uh, fast and we, we could have um, <laughs> had a go around, but we didn't. Right, now we have to go around the airport to find the bus into the city centre. It's around about a quarter to 11 now. Is that right, Paul? Oh, yeah. it is a quarter to 11. <laughs> and we have to be back at the airport um, at around half past four, something like that, I think. So we'll check on that later. So the bus should take about half an hour to get into Dublin. So we're gonna have roughly four to four and a half hours there to do everything. And once we get off the bus in part two, we will reveal what we are doing in Dublin today.
We have got our tickets for the air coach. Yeah. It was eight euro each for yeah. a single. We are on board and it seems to be a rather packed bus. But the good news is it's leaving in five minutes, so there we go. Have that empire state of mind. So please subscribe. We have just got off the air coach at O'Connell Street Upper, and now we're going to reveal the mission that we are on today. Isn't what that mission right? Is that? Oh, <laughs> oh, you don't know the mission? Oh, well. The first thing that we need to do is to go to Dunn stores. In fact, we're going to two of them. One for clothes and one for food. Because I need my knickers and I also need my Tato crisps. So that is the first stop. Then I need to get some magazines and newspapers at Eason. And it's on O'Connell Street here. I need coffee. Do you? Because we've been up since an ungodly hour and I've only had four hours sleep last night. We're going to get our coffee at Bewley's on Grafton Street and that's where we will also have our lunch. And then there's also that bookstore that I wanted to go to. Yeah, I, um, I can't it. remember the name of it. But, but we uh, <laughs> will show you when we get there. Yeah, that is a, a, a sort of a, a late addition to uh, the schedule. Now, it is a little bit damp here today. People have their umbrellas up. There's a few spits and spots of rain, but we will still make it to the park. So we are going to go to St. Stephen's <laughs> Green and maybe see some ducks and swans and have a little walk around. And then there will just be time for a Guinness. And thanks to my friend Kev, we are going to go to the Palace Bar on Fleet Street. And I'm told it's an institution. I've never been there before. And the good news is, is that it's just round the corner from the bus stop to get the coach back to the airport. So let's get going. First stop, Dunn Stores. This is the Dunn's that sells food. So let's hope we can get our Tato crisps right now. So I got two bags of Tato cheese and onion. And I also got two bars of Irish Cadbury's dairy milk. Uh, one is a Turkish and that's for some of the work. There was a good offer because it was 2.50, 2.50€ if you bought two bags of crisps and the same offer on the chocolate. Now, I also did get some of my papers and magazines there. I will be going to Eason to get more, um, but I did get my Ireland's own. I got the Herald, which is a Dublin paper, and also, even though I won't be able to watch the programmes, I did get oh. the RTE guide. And Paul, you got a few things as well. Yes, indeed, I did also get some things here. I bought, I think this is Tipperary, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, it says O'Donnell's. O'Donnell's Tipperary. Oh, Tipperary, yeah. So this is um, mature cheese and red onion. Ooh. So there's that. And I bought... Oh, you got the chocolate deal as well. Two bars of fruit and nut. Ah, right. You see, I like fruit and nut, but I'm a bit uh, worried about my teeth at the minute. Because so. of the nuts? Yeah. And then I also bought... Some of these Dunn stores in store baked um, chocolate chip cookies. Are you sure you're going to be able to carry all that home? Yeah. My oh, bag's nice. empty. 
Right, well now we're going to check out the clothing store of Dunn Stores. Alrighty. The rain is beginning to pelt down now, so it's just as well that the other Duns was just across the street. We had to cross O'Connell Street and we are now on uh, Henry Street. So let's go and get our knickers and I think you're getting some socks. While we're at Dunn's, we stopped off for a very much needed quick coffee because I flat white for you and Americano with milk for me because I was falling asleep on the plane and I, I need to stay awake for the rest of this episode. So I thought also while we're here and it's raining outside, it would be a perfect opportunity to show you what we bought here at the clothes store of Dunstone's. Speaking of which, Ooh. they also have a food hall down oh, yes. there. Yes, yeah, I, I'm not sure if this is new or I just never spotted it before. I don't think it was here. When last we time. walked in, there there is actually a food hall downstairs. So um, yeah, maybe if you know in the comments is this something new? It's been a couple of years since we've been here, so maybe maybe it is. But let's look at what we bought anyway. Uh, you got this pack of um, ankle socks. A pair of five. For four euros. Mm -hmm. There was no price on it, but you asked the lady, and when you found out it was four euro, you were delighted. And when you found out that I was going to pay for it, well, you just didn't care. And for me, I did manage to get what I came for. What's that? My knickers. How many are there? Well, there's only three in here. Um, you need more? No, it's okay because I do have quite a supply, but I don't have any uh, new ones to uh, open at the minute. Although. When we're in Europe, we go to CNA, and I've discovered that they do a pretty good knicker as well. So I've actually got some spares. But uh, you can't come to Ireland, you can't go to Dunn stores and not buy knickers. So we are going to enjoy this coffee. Hopefully, it'll wake us up properly, and then the next stop will be Eason. Well, I just couldn't resist having a look at the food hall, and I thought, well, what else? could I possibly carry and perfect Urban's potato farrels so that'll keep me going for breakfast and I also got to the Irish Independent and it looks a little bit different to how it used to so next stop really is Eason because there are some other newspapers I want to get that I can't get here Let's see what I can get at Eason. What did you get? Well, I got the Irish News, which is from Belfast, and the Irish Daily Star, oh, right. which is from Dublin. I was hoping to get the newsletter, which is another Belfast paper, but they didn't have it. In actual fact, there seems to be a bit of a change around at Eason's. There's not as much room for newspapers and magazines as there used to be. They also keep a wide range of regional titles, but the one that I wanted, the Dairy Journal, oh. was not available. So oh, no. it's either the wrong time of the week or they had sold out. And while we were there, we were looking at sweets as we always do, and the temptation uh, grew. So we did actually buy a bag of mints. And what are they? They're not here. Oh. Where are they, Paul? Where it's are my it, mints? It is in here. It's in here. It's in here. It's in the... Oh, you've got them. Show us. Uh, so it's Richie's Milky Mints. Moo! I don't even know what these are, <laughs> um, but I've, ne I've never seen them before. However, I love a Mr. Frosty. Isn't it Mr. Frosty, my ice cream? Whippy? No, Mr. it's Mr. Frosty, I don't isn't know. it? Yeah. I'm going mad. I think but so. But I have a feeling that these might taste like that milk ice lolly. So we'll just have to see. And uh, I'm carrying all the newspapers back. We've got limited space. Paul's got to carry <laughs> most of the food. So that's why that's in his bag. Okay, it's almost one o'clock. It's time for lunch. 
we're going to take a very quick look at the Liffey as we cross it and then it'll be time for lunch at Bewley's. That's the Liffey behind us. We're on O'Connell Bridge. If you want to see lots of other bridges in Dublin, then check back from our previous episodes from a couple of years ago because we did a more in-depth one where we spent a day crisscrossing all the bridges in Dublin across the Liffey. I need my lunch, Paul. You've brought me to Hodges Figure Star. It is actually a really good bookstore and it is on Dawson Street and there is a tram stop just outside so we're going to take a quick look at the tram as well. There goes the tram off to Parnell and look over here one of the very few if not the only surviving tower records in the world and it is here in Dublin. There is actually another one at Eason on O'Connell Street mm -hmm. but as a standalone I think this is the last one standing. But uh, here we are, Hodges Figures. We'll take a quick look and then it is definitely time for lunch at Bewley's. On you go then, Paul. Okay, <laughs> I've got him carrying my bags. <laughs> or my bag and his bag. We're at Bewley's now and there's a five to eight minute wait for a table. So there usually is a bit of a wait here. In fact, I think the last time we had to wait longer. longer. Um, so it is a weekday while we're here. So um, I'm very hungry. And we are very hungry. They've given us menus to look at. So hopefully it won't be too long. It's around about 20 past one now. So we're maybe a little bit behind schedule. It just means that when we get to the pub, there will be less time to down our Guinness.
Welcome to a very wet and a rather noisy St. Stephen's Green. The birds are really wet. making quite a, a din today. Now, talking of din, we've just had our din-dins, our lunch at Bewley's. And it was a really lovely experience. In fact, there was probably a bit too much food. Mm -hmm. So I had the bacon and leek quiche and some roast potatoes followed by a butter scone with butter, uh, cream and raspberry jam and a lovely pot of afternoon tea. And Paul, what did you have? I had the triple sandwich. I think it was parma ham, a mozzarella, pesto. It was the tricolor actually, mm. or the tricolor, as you think you might have. Tricolor, yes. Yeah, the tricolor um, sandwich. And you had anything else with it? Oh, you had a big slice of cake, didn't you? That chocolate cake, which was rather nice. I had a bit too. And very stodgy. Your drink was a soy matcha latte. Very good. And the lady who served us was very, very friendly indeed and i hope you are maybe watching today and maybe even subscribed thank you well we have about an hour and a quarter left and as it's raining so much we aren't going to take too much more time looking around st stephen's green here as lovely as it is but um i think we've got a pint of guinness waiting for us yes so off we go to the palace bar And here we are at the Palace Bar, as recommended by my friend Kev. So let's check it out and see if it has the best Guinness in Dublin. Well, it's time to head back to the airport. I've just checked the flight and it is the 6.55 back to London, but this time to Gatwick, not Luton. Isn't that right, Paul? Not really. What do you mean? On, on my ticket, it says 6.15. So I think we need to get going. What? Well, we better check it again. You've booked on a different flight. Yeah, I think so. So, I'm on the 6.55, but you're on the 6.15. Which means that we've got less drinking time. No. We're going to have to, like, rush the this pint of Guinness. All right. At, at least we are both flying back to the same airport. So, we did book it at different times. Uh -huh. Why do you think that you got the wrong one? Because you said you searched for the one that was 18 euros, which is what the... Rather than the time of the flight, my dear? I did it in a rush. I never book in a rush. Oh well, never mind. Well, we wouldn't be sitting next to each other anyway. So. <laughs> Not on Ryanair. No. Welcome to New York. The city that never sleeps. And I hope that you don't fall asleep without catching our YouTube channel. It's Paul and Marcus. So why not hit the subscribe button below? Thank you. And we are back at Dublin Airport Terminal 1. Paul will be boarding his flight about 40 minutes before I board mine. But hopefully we can both go through at 
the same time. And I think when you get to Gatwick, you're going to go to Weatherspoons and get something to eat. And you've downloaded um, Flight Radar 24, and um, you can track my flight. So you could actually order some food so as it's ready for me when I eventually arrive about 40 minutes later because I'll probably be hungry. We've actually eaten a little bit too much. I feel sick. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're feeling a little bit sort of dodgy here. Um, but we will also sum up how the day went when we get back to Gatwick and onto the train. We'll be taking the train to London Bridge and then the tube back home to Uxbridge. So we might have a few clips from our flights but we will see you back in London. Well, my flight has been delayed by 35 minutes, so I don't think Paul's gonna be getting me any food back at Gatwick. I'll try to get something here before I leave. And maybe you can get food or you can get a drink or something while you wait. No, I did say to Paul, I said you could just go on home ahead of me, but no, we did get our new rail card, yes. which gives you a third off travel when you travel together. It's a two together rail card. We weren't able to use it this morning during peak, but this evening it's off peak, so everything should be okay. So we want to save some money because we will have a grand total of how much this day trip has cost, and it is rather more than expected. Well, my flight has now been further delayed by another 10 minutes. Bringing it to how many minutes late? Um, 45 minutes Ooh. late. Um, yours might have a 20 minute delay, but that's not certain yet. So while we're sort of sitting here, we thought we would sum up, apart from the price, which will come at the end, um, what we've thought of this. And my conclusion is, it's not worth it. My conclusion is, I was kind of silly to think that I should book it after Marcus has already booked it. And then booking the wrong thing, but now it is going to benefit me. But now I'm gonna also be waiting for Marcus when I get back to Gatwick. So, uh, uh. I mean, it was nice to see Dublin, even yeah. in the rain. And we had a lovely time and at Bewley's. It was Bewley's. soaking most of the time. Yeah, day. Um, got all the bits and pieces that we wanted. Got most of my newspapers. Got my but stuff from Dunn's. getting up at an ungodly hour in the middle of the night, trekking out to Luton, having to buy this small bag and everything. <laughs> um, so it's unfamiliar to me, and it means that all my stuff is just stuffed in. Um, and then not sitting together um, only having four and a half hours here I don't really know what was I thinking when I did this and then what was I thinking to myself yeah why don't I join Marcus because I had the revelation that yeah I think it might be fun but yeah well I think we've got at least one new subscriber out of it so that's something oh maybe, maybe this two. is a good point maybe two where you should actually say to the viewers about subscribing Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel today. For those of you have, that have liked it, please hit the thumbs up. For those of you that have not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. And we do also appreciate your comments. So and keep oh, them coming. Yes, and also, if you would like to buy us a coffee, and we'd need a couple of them today, oh, then there is a <laughs> link in the description. description. Now, this is the point where we usually say, <laughs> see you next time. But there will be a final part to this, hopefully, when we are both back at Gatwick and on the Thameslink train to London Bridge. Hopefully. And we'll sum up the total amount that this day trip oh. has cost, not including food. We're not going to include food in this. It's only this transport. is only the transport, which will be the flights, the tubes, the, the trains buses. and the buses. Well, welcome to London Bridge. Gatwick Airport Railway Station. Now, I'm afraid I have to tell you that I had quite a bad flight to make up for the good one that I had going out. I was sitting next to a rather large lady with a baby strapped to her. And I was in the middle seat, she was in the window and another guy was in the aisle. However, mm -hmm. the plane was not full and the guy moved and then I was able to move. So it wasn't as bad as it could be. I was able to do some editing of this episode, not much. Um, 
the table was quite rickety and the plane came down with quite a thud and was then really quick on the runway. Oh, no. Yeah, um, I think they were trying to make up time, which they did. Um, I mean, it was only about 25 uh, minutes or half an hour late in the end. No, I wasn't able to get any clips. <laughs> it's just impossible. But Paul, you were able to get some clips from your flight, which was much better, wasn't it? Because I sat in the middle seat, there was no one sitting, so then I sat there a majority of the flight, and then I moved over to the window seat, and then I just got so much footage. Well, I so think we footage. will take a little look at that now. And also, you also got some clips at Gatwick Airport, where I think you're talking about plugs. Gatwick does not seem to have any of these charging plugs. They are all covered. So you need to use one of these free charging zone areas. Sit down, plug in and power up. That is the phrase that they use. And it took me a while to find this place, but I'm really glad that I did because I am less than 20% and I don't want it to die. So that's a very good thing. Well, we are now on board the Thameslink train to London Bridge. Before we talk about the cost, I also want to say that there was a bit of chaos at Dublin Airport for my flight before I boarded. It was supposed to be originally delayed by almost an hour, then it was half an hour, then it was 15 minutes. Then it said it was back on time, then they changed the gate number, and then I thought, right, I've missed it because I'd walked the whole way to this other gate only to find that that flight was going somewhere else, and then walked back to the original gate to find that the plane hadn't even come in. And by that stage, there was a message from Ryanair saying they would try to send a push text message to me when they got information, and that never came. So the incoming flight arrived, the people started getting off, and almost immediately, they then said that we were boarding while the people were still getting off. But oh no, they took us through the uh, gate area and then everybody was held standing in the stairwell for about 15 or 20 minutes. I think my I was standing in the stairwell for ages too. Well, it's just pretty pathetic really. And it's gone to prove that after 25 years, I haven't flown with Ryanair. The only reason I did it was to do this day trip for YouTube and to buy a bag of crisps and it wasn't worth it. Now, 
let's come to the the cost the fun part um i booked this about two weeks before we were going at that stage paul wasn't going to come um and my flight's total cost was 39 pounds 90 so let's say 40 quid then when paul decided to come it had gone up at least the outbound flight had gone up a bit his outbound flight was 90 something 99 96 or something about 96 pounds uh the inbound flight was same. 18 euro which was the same uh, as something like that the same as what i paid but of course he selected a different flight and on your part that was actually a good move in the end so sometimes but, mistakes do pay but don't count on these mistakes with Ryanair. That is only oh, yeah. a, a fluke. That is only a fluke because of the algorithm. The algorithm assigned me that spare seat. Like it could have assigned anyone any of those seats. Well, it wasn't really about the seat. It was just the fact that you were on a flight that left more or less on time and had uh, a little bit more comfort. Now, the total cost. So we're now talking about tube journeys to and from Uxbridge, the train from, where were we this morning? That's we were at King's Cross. Uh, St. Pan it was actually St Pancras. So from St Pancras to Luton and then back from Gatwick to London Bridge. The bus, the coach, both ways from Dublin Airport into the city centre and the flights. Drum roll please. <laughs> Two hundred and sixty pounds. No, that's a, quite an expensive day trip. That's only a day, and trip. that's only the travel. We haven't even talked about the food. Maybe we should. Breakfast was about forty pounds. Lunch at Bewley's, which was fantastic, and I've got no problem with paying this at all. It was fifty-five pounds, and we did eat so much that. We were nearly, nearly sick. Um, we got a coffee, which each of which was four pounds at Dunn's, and the pint of Guinness each. Oh, the pint of Guinness each, which was about twelve pounds. Was it? Yeah. Something like that. And my food, my I got a sandwich and a coffee, which I didn't even eat properly at Dublin, and that was eleven pounds, not and worth it at all. And then and what was yours? I spent three pounds thirty-three on one of those reduced. Oh. Sandwiches at MS when I got back to Gatwick Airport. Oh, so that's all you had. So you can tot all that up in your head. Okay, I've got to edit this episode when I get home tonight Good because luck. I don't like leaving it to the next day. We will see you next time. Bye. 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 Did that really happen?